Okay, so so far we have talked about derivations and how we can find the derivative of a function using the rules that we have talked about, the rules and the shortcuts. And now we'll talk about integrals. The topic of this chapter is integrals. So what is an integral? Well, there are basically two definitions of integrals. Either it's an area under the curve of a function or it's called the antiderivative of a function. So these two definitions are based on what? Well, they are based on either we are trying to find the definite integral or the indefinite integral. What do I mean by that? Well, in the first one, area under the curve of a function, this is the definition that suits integrals that are definite, meaning that you are finding the area of a segment of that function. Antiderivatives are suitable for those integrals that are indefinite, meaning you don't have any particular segment that you are trying to find the integral of, but you are finding the antiderivative of a function. These two are the same, but if I give you an example, it will be like, for here it will be like, for example, give me the chair, but here it will be like, give me a chair. In this chapter, we'll talk about the rules of antiderivatives, how to find the antiderivative of a function or the indefinite integral of a function. But how can we differentiate between definite and indefinite integrals? Well, first of all, this is the symbol of integrals. Either it is indefinite or definite. If you want to find the integral of a function, you write this and then the function right here. If it is indefinite integral, you don't have any numbers on top or in bottom. If it is definite integral, you have a number on top and a number on bottom, which represents the segments that you are trying to find the integral. If it is like that, again, it is a definite integral because you have a number on top and a number on bottom that represents the segment that you are trying to find the integral of. If you don't have any numbers, then that is a indefinite integral integral okay so indefinite integral and definite integral so basically when you have a function like this and you are trying to find the integral of you just basically write this for the indefinite integral and something very very important is when you find the indefinite integral of a function you have to write a constant at the end so you basically write a plus constant at the end of the integral that you are doing why is that? Well, let me tell you why. Derivatives and indefinite integrals are opposite of each other. So, for example, if you have x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the integral of 2x is x squared. However, the derivative of x squared plus 5 is still 2x, and the derivative of x squared plus a million is still 2x, because the constant, which is a plus million, the derivative of a constant is zero. So the derivative of x squared plus any constant is just 2x. So you have to keep in mind that when you're integrating a function or you are finding the indefinite integral of a function, for example, like 2x, when you go back to the original function, you'll assume that there was a constant right there. That's why you are writing this constant at the end of the integration. Just keep that in mind. And for simplicity, in the examples that we will be doing, I'll not be writing this plus constant sign. However, I'll be reminding you in every example that to write it when you have an exam or you are solving a homework because it's extremely important. Okay, so this is about the definition of integrals. Let's jump right into the rules that let us find the antiderivatives of functions. Let's check out the first rule. 